In Oxfordshire, England, Ian Chapman is investigating the physics that power stars, something scientists have examined for hundreds of years. This billion-dollar international research facility is called JET. And if Chapman's theory is correct, it should reveal how a star like our sun can produce such vast amounts of energy. The sun is an immense ball of hydrogen and helium. Above the surface, a superheated halo burns at over two million degrees. Beneath this shroud of gas lies the fiery surface emitting 400 trillion trillion watts of sunlight. The energy is fueled from an internal power source. 310,000 miles beneath the surface in the star's mysterious core. Ian wants to know how heating hydrogen gas to extreme temperatures can generate energy and reveal how the sun could be powered. The reactor must be able to withstand temperatures 10 times hotter than the center of the sun. Engineers use a manually controlled robotic arm to inspect the surfaces inside the reactor vessel. So, here we go. Ian starts the process by heating the fuel source, hydrogen gas. What we're doing here is we'll take some gas, put it into the vessel, and then we have to get that gas really, really hot. And so we're passing a, an extreme current, millions of amps of current go through that fuel and turn it into a plasma just like you would see in stars in space. So you have a solid, then a liquid, then a gas, then a plasma. And a plasma is like a very energetic gas. The team draws huge amounts of electricity to power the 38 magnets. 10, 9, 8. 700 megawatts, enough to power an entire city. 3, 2, 1. They heat the hydrogen to 72 million degrees. The cooler edges of the plasma begin to glow. And with a final boost of energy, plasma reaches over 180 million degrees. So hot, it turns invisible. Once you have a plasma under that temperature condition, it behaves in a very similar way to what happens in the sun. Scientists believe they can test how the sun is really powered. Deep in the heart of the sun, the extreme pressure and temperature forces hydrogen atoms together, causing them to fuse and create helium. This is nuclear fusion, and it creates as much energy as 100 billion atomic bombs every second. Gamma rays blast out of the core and radiate through the super-dense plasma the energy transforms on its journey, finally reaching the surface where it shoots out as light. At JET, their results have confirmed that when hydrogen plasma reaches 180 million degrees, a huge amount of energy is released from nuclear fusion. This physics is finally revealing how nuclear fusion can power stars like our sun. Fundamentally, what we're doing here is we're understanding where the stars get their energy from, um, why the stars shine, why they're giving out the energy that they are because of the fusion which is going on inside the body of the star. But a star's nuclear fuel won't last forever. The more massive a star is, the faster it lives and the faster it dies. So really massive stars have very short lives. How does a massive star cataclysmically explode? Scientists believe gravity could be to blame. Throughout its life, a star is precariously balanced. Inside, gravity compresses the star, 
pulling it together, while energy blasting from the core pushes out. But when the fuel runs out, gravity wins, crushing the core in milliseconds, and an explosion begins. But the star's outer layers hide the fury for up to 10 hours. It's a giant time bomb. The star goes supernova, the greatest explosion in the cosmos. To understand the power in a supernova, all you have to do is look at a photograph of one. So supernovae typically occur in galaxies. So here's the galaxy of 100 billion stars, and then you have the one exploding star that's brighter than the over 100 billion stars. Supernovae blow off these enormous shells of gases that have these uh, structures and colors and filaments. They're, they're just beautiful. Although we understand the basic principles behind the explosions of stars, the details are still not understood. We see the expanding ejected gases, and they're really bright. But this is the aftermath of the explosion. So what about the explosion itself? To understand the mysteries inside supernovae, scientists hope to catch one in the act. But can they predict when a star might catastrophically explode? In the Italian mountains, physicist Andrea Molinario is working on a supernova early warning system. Andrea spent his days searching for strange, elusive particles called neutrinos. Neutrinos come from many different sources. Trillions of them are crossing through us every second, but we, we cannot feel them. Hundreds of billions of neutrino particles are continually passing through our bodies unnoticed. They can even travel through the entire planet without being stopped. The reason is that neutrinos have really a low probability of interacting with matter. So this makes them really, really hard to detect. To investigate, Andrea travels to a hidden laboratory nearly a mile under the Italian mountains. Inside the lab is a machine designed to catch the mysterious neutrinos, and it is very large. This is the large volume detector. It's a huge neutrino detector. It's made up of 840 different tanks. Each of these tanks is filled with a special liquid when a neutrino gets there and interacts with this liquid, a flash of light is produced. The tanks hold 1,100 tons of liquid packed with sensors that can pick up the faint flash of light and turn it into a signal. It's so sensitive to unwanted radiation, it must be hidden deep underground. We are under 1,400 meters of rock above our heads, so we are uh, we have the full mantis on top of us. Andrea thinks that neutrinos could be the key to predicting supernovae. He is looking for a sudden spike in detections, a signal measured only once before. Hours after a neutrino signal, a bright light appeared in the night sky, a supernova. You don't know exactly when a supernova is going to happen. These are events that happen all of a sudden. Could a burst in neutrinos be connected to a stellar explosion? Scientists believe that deep inside a dying star, the core collapse turns 99% of the star's energy into a powerful burst of neutrinos. They shoot through the star at almost the speed of light and escape into the cosmos. In their wake, a shockwave is triggered as each layer collapses and explodes. In turn, the wave surges to the edge of the star until hours later, it finally hits the surface and explodes in all its glory. <laughs> 